Yo, you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another Tuesday quick review. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Deluxe Trap Jaw figure from Mattel. Now, this figure comes in the same style of packaging we see with all the Revelation Masterverse figures. You've got the blue at the top, and then it gets darker as you go towards the bottom. Now, obviously, since this is a deluxe figure, the packaging is wider than a regular figure. But otherwise, it's the same. You've got the Masters of the Universe Revelation logo and the name of the character. You've got the Mattel logo. Over here in this corner, you have that Netflix logo, since this is based on a Netflix series. On this side, it tells you you've got to be six years or older to get this figure and uh, has 30 points of articulation. Now on the sides, on this side, you just have the character's name. On this side, you do have some artwork. And then on the back of the packaging, you have additional artwork, a brief bio for the character, and then down below, a look at other figures in the line. This is a mix of deluxe figures and regular figures. All but the classic Tila there and the Merman figure have been released. Um, those, uh, those two will be in the next wave, but all the others are out on shelves now. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the accessories. Now, uh, a good portion of the accessories with this figure are essentially his alternate look, the, the, that techno cult look, you know, when he joins up with his buddy Triclops, which is actually, you know, what he was wearing throughout most of the Revelation series. We really only got to see him with this classic look for like a split second in the first episode. But um, uh, we'll, we'll uh, look, a, we'll take a closer look at, at that outfit in just a minute. But uh, the other accessories, you get an alternate uh, left hand. So he obviously, Trap Joe only has one hand. So you get a grip hand and then you get this alternate open hand. And then the remaining accessories are his alternate uh, weapon arm pieces. And these are the same that we generally see with Trap Jaw. So you get three in total. You get the laser gun, uh, which is the one that's attached to the figure when you take it out of the packaging. Now, um, you know, he does have an elbow joint. But um, I like the, actually, you know, they gave you a little more detailing on these weapons than you generally get with trap jaw figures. I like this extra metallic silver, like on the tip, and you also have a little bit of metallic silver here on these two lines. So he's got the scope like usual. Uh, he's got the hook piece, so if you want to attach this one to his belt. So like all trap jaw figures, you just, you know, pull it off. And then uh, whichever ones he's not using, you know, he comes with, with a total of three. So uh, whichever two he's not using, you can hook on his belt, which again is something you generally see with uh, trap doll figures. Now, something I will say, um, since uh, these the way they're done, I, I wish the hooks, you know, that you do on the belt, I wish they were like on the sides so that you could, you know, I don't like how these when you hook them into the belts that basically they're, they're positioned. So they have a tendency to kind of stick out on the figure. Um, and you know, it's not like these, it's not like you can turn these pieces. Same with uh, this one. So he's got the claw, uh, which, you know, this is a pretty menacing looking claw, a little more so than we generally see. Again, you have the metallic silver and then he has the hook, you know, again, that, those are generally the two alternate uh, weapon accessories that the figure comes with. But what I don't like, again, on this figure is how they positioned uh, the hook for the belt so that when you hook them in, you know, they just kind of stick out. Uh, again, it would have been nice if they had done it so you could hook it in like this. So the, these wide pieces were more uh, f uh, flush with the figure. So... Uh, that's probably, uh, you know, one of my bigger complaints with the figure. Not that major, but, you know, definitely would have liked to have seen that. Actually, as I was playing around with the figure, I noticed um, you can actually kind of turn the, the accessories in the belt so they don't stick out as much. So um, the way the hole is sculpted, you know, it's basically supposed to put in like that. But again, you can kind of push it back like that. So that definitely helps. Uh, so that they don't stick out nearly as much. Okay, now for the figure itself. So starting with the head sculpt. Now, I know this is something that a lot of people kind of focused in on when the official images for this figure were released, and that's how they did the mouth with it being open. Now, uh, you know, I agree that when you have the, the metal jaw kind of down and you see the open mouth, that looks a little bit off to me. Every time I see that open mouth, I think of the Budweiser commercial where he's like, what up? 
But the thing is you can pull the metal jaw up so it mostly covers the mouth. And when you do that, I don't think it looks bad. You know, and I like, you know, the eye expressions and stuff on the figure. So, you know, like I said, if you keep it, if you keep the metal jaw down like that, I think it looks a little funny. But for me, you know, I'm just going to push it up like that. And I think it looks pretty good overall. So the open mouth really doesn't bother me too much. I don't know why they gave him such an open mouth. But um, like I said, because you can pretty much cover it up, it doesn't really bother me. Now you have the little uh, uh, O-ring here on the top. So, you know, you can do like if you have a string, you can like zip line them down. You know, I think that's a throwback to the original uh, action figure. Uh, one thing I did notice is his helmet. The jaw is a different color. It's a darker color, uh, a darker type of purple. Um, and then his helmet itself is a lighter color. That's in keeping with the cartoon, but... I don't know, I almost would have preferred it was like all the same color, which is, I you know, think how it is on, on most of the figures, but not a big deal, but, but I think I probably would have rather liked it being all one color. Now, I do like you have the silver, metallic silver on these pieces on the top of the helmet, and so those pop nicely with that purple. I do like this metallic color on the jaw. I think I if I had to choose between one or the other, I think I would have chosen uh, this metallic color that they gave on the jaw. Then he has his, his metal arm, and you know, like with always, this is kind of a, a separate sculpted piece um, done with a black metallic type color. So overall, that looks good. And then, you know, matches up with the weapon pieces. So I like that. You have that on the back, and it crosses over here. You have these little uh, spikes that are sculpted, which look pretty good. He also has this uh, black piece here. The paint on this figure, I think, is pretty solid, you know. I, I like the blue, this dark blue that they use for a skin tone. And the green, you've got the darker and the lighter greens. He's got the green on the belt. This belt is a separate piece. And then you have this belt underneath. Then he's got the loincloth. And that's done with a kind of a maroon reddish color with a little bit of wash. So I think that looks pretty good. And then again, on the legs, you've got the blue. And then you've got the black portions that come up. I do have a little bit of a scuff or a little bit of blue that got on the black here, but not too major. You've got the lighter greens here. And then he's got the boots. And on the boots, like you have lighter, uh, like you have this darker black here. And then you have this lighter kind of metallic grayish uh, color. Uh, so I like that mixture of the dark and the light. It gives you that extra, you know, it just gives you kind of extra detail on it. So it's not just like a solid black color. So I like that as well. So overall, I think Mattel has done a pretty solid job with the paint applications on this figure. Uh, everything pops pretty nice. Now this belt is actually removable, which you'll need to take off when you uh, switch out his uh, outfit. But, um, you know, I, I like the overall look. And again, so, you know, even though I, I don't really like the open mouth, you know, I like you can cover it. So I think this is a pretty nice looking figure. Now this figure stands, if you count to the uh, little O-ring on the top of his head, is uh, about just under seven and a half inches tall. Now here's a comparison with the Masters of the Universe Classics version of Trap Jaw. And you can see this new one is taller. I, I There are things like I like the belt better on the classic version just because it has a little more paint detail. Um, but I like this color uh, better, this metallic color a little bit better. However, it is all the same color on this one. So I, I do think I kind of like that better. But like this one, the eyes are really kind of buggy. Um, so I actually like the eyes better on this figure. And again, when you cover up the mouth, I actually like uh, the face of this one better than, than this one. Now, you know, both of them have the articulated jaws. And I don't like the open mouth underneath the piece, but but when you have the mouth covered, I actually like this helmet a little bit better. Though again, I think I would have liked it better if the helmet was all the same color. I like the more detailing. Um, you have some blues on this one, so I don't know. Um, but I like the metallics, you know, the lighter metallic colors on this one. So I think that stands out pretty good. Now here's the Origins version, which is, you know, obviously based more on the original toy. And then just for a final comparison, here's a look at the Masterverse Skeletor and the Masterverse Triclops. Now as for articulation on this figure, you can rotate the head all the way around. You get a little bit of down movement. He can look down about that much. And then he can look basically straight ahead, but he really can't look back at all. And then uh, you don't get a whole lot of head pivot with this one either. Now with the arms, you get the arm out pretty good there. You can rotate the arm. Uh, you do not have like a butterfly joint 
no, you don't have a butterfly joint. Now with this arm, the metal arm, you can, you know, you can rotate all the way around. You can get the arm up about that much. Um, so you still get some decent movement and then you get a single hinged elbow so he can bend there with his weapons. Same with this one. Now this is actually a double hinged elbow, but the way they've sculpted the muscle, um, that's really as far as you can bend the arm. So again, even though it does technically have a double hinged elbow, it's you don't get a whole lot of bending movement there with it. And then with the hand, you can rotate the hand all the way around and you have the hinge joint, so you have the up and down movement. Now for the midsection, you've got rotation there, but he really can't crunch forward and he really doesn't have much in the way of back movement either. You also get rotation at the waist. So you get uh, two rotation spots here in the midsection. With the legs, he can do the splits pretty good. He can get the leg forward pretty good and he can do the leg back. You do get a thigh swivel. You get a double jointed knee, so good bending there at the knee. And then uh, with the feet, you get ankle pivot and you get uh, up and down movement as well and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch out and, and put him in his Colt, Techno Colt look. So first thing you wanna do is unclip this belt. It just comes off. So there's a look at the figure without uh, his outer belt. And you know, I don't think it looks too bad. A little bit of a, a blue splotch there. It looks like nothing major, but just wanted to point that out. And then uh, what you do with this is he's got the soft goods piece. This is his inner robe, I guess you call it. And um, there's Velcro on the back here. So that's the, the portion with the Velcro is, is the back. So you can un-Velcro this. So that you can put it on him. You probably want to take off his weapon attachment when you're putting this on. Well, this makes it a little bit easier. So you put it on there kind of like it's a you know, hospital gown. And you Velcro it back up. And you can put his uh, arm attachment, whichever one you want, back on. And then uh, you have this outer piece. So with this, you're gonna wanna pop the head off. It just pops right off. And then you're going to uh, put this over the neck. And then you're just gonna uh, pop the head back on. And then finally, he has uh, this belt, which you just put on. And it just, I would say you wanna put it underneath uh, this flap in the back. And just uh, snap it into place. Go on, pop off the hand and put the ex the alternate hand, the open hand on. Yeah, you don't need that for, for this look per se, but we'll go on and do it just for the sake of doing so. And again, this is now in his techno uh, cult look, um, which is how he actually appeared in most of, of, of the series. So if we ever, if we do ever get a season three, we'll probably be seeing more of Trapjaw with this look. But, you know, like I said, even though this is the look that he had in the uh, a cartoon for most of it, I think most people who get this figure are probably going to display it with more of his classic look. So that's my review. Now, this figure is out now. I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store, who, of course, is a sponsor to the channel. But I believe other places have started to get it in stock as well. But I, I don't know if I've seen anyone actually finding it at physical stores yet. But if not, then probably it will start hitting places like Target and Walmart fairly soon. But, um, you know, again, if, if you're a fan of Trapjaw, I think this one is worth picking up. Now, of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like this video if you're so inclined. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching today's video and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to alert it every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, 
action figures are great. 